The Dispensation of Grace Introduction Before the sixth dispensation is examined, several important truths concerning the grace of God should be considered. First, in the scriptures the grace of God deals with far more than salvation from sin. For example, it was by the grace of God that Noah survived the flood. Genesis 6 8, that Israel was restored to its homeland after the Babylonian captivity, Ezra 9 8, and that the afflicted were sustained in their trials, Proverbs 3 34. It is by the grace of God that believers are given spiritual gifts and ministries. Indeed, the grace of God has so many facets that Peter called it the manifold <coughs> grace of God, 1 Peter 4 10. The grace of God began. Adam and Eve, all the way up through. So this might be the grace age, focused primarily as a ruling factor, <coughs> but it doesn't mean that grace didn't exist. Even in the Mosaic Law period, lots of graciousness God afforded Israel and the world. So what is the ruling factor? The new ruling factor is grace. That's something new. Showers continues. Although the grace of God was functioning throughout Old Testament times, it began to function in some new sense as a result of the ministry of Jesus Christ in his first coming. John indicated this when he wrote, The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. John 1.17 John appeared to be making this new function of grace parallel with the new func with the function of the Mosaic Law. The function of the Mosaic Law was very gracious. He gave that to Israel as a rule of life to bless them if they followed it and to discipline them if they didn't. And it was a, a model for righteousness that man couldn't achieve but it would then turn people to realize we can't keep these precepts of the law perfectly and turn the Messiah's Savior, Jesus Christ, the seed of Abraham. Because Abraham was given not the Mosaic Law. He was given the grace of God. Abraham was believed God in God's plan for eternity for him. And Abraham believed God's plan through a coming descendant of his, his seed, Abraham's seed, Abram's seed, and God credited to him his righteousness. Does that sound like the gospel? The grace gospel? Absolutely. So the Mosaic law never functioned as a way of salvation. Galatians 2.16. Take a look. We are Jews by nature and not sinners from among the Gentiles. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus, even we have believed in Christ Jesus, so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, since by the works of the law no flesh will be justified, because it's beyond our capacity to do that. We have sin natures. It did function as a rule of life, a ruling factor. In light of this, John is saying that grace began to function as a rule of life, a ruling factor as a result of Christ's ministry in his first coming. Now, other passages indicate that grace began to function as a ruling factor as a result of Christ's ministry. Paul wrote to believers in the present, the sixth dispensation, you are not under law, but under grace, Romans 6.14. In this passage, the function of grace, which Paul had in mind, is parallel with the function of the Mosaic Law. In other words, grace has now taken over the function which the Mosaic Law had in the previous dispensation. As noted earlier, the Mosaic Law never functioned as a way of salvation, but it did function as a ruling factor. And it presented the righteousness of God. People would look at it, and if they were honest, they say, well, we can't keep that. Look for the grace of God through a coming Messiah Savior, which the tradition of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would offer. 
Father Abraham. Thus, the function of grace, which Paul had in mind in this passage, is that of a ruling factor. This is indicated further by the word under which implies being under rule. Paul was saying that believers in the present dispensation are now under grace, rather than the Mosaic law as a ruling factor, not as a means for salvation. Thus, while grace continues to function as the way of life during this present sixth dispensation, it has assumed the additional function of a ruling factor as a result of Christ's ministry in his first coming. In Titus 2, 11 and 12, Paul indicated that one of the functions of the grace of God is that of teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. The word teaching means to practice discipline, correct, give guidance. Thus, Paul was saying that grace practices discipline over believers for the purpose of prompting them to reject a godless lifestyle and to adopt a godly one. Paul stated that the grace of God is functioning as a ruling factor in this present world. The word which is translated world means age. Grace is the ruling factor which uniquely characterizes the dispensation during this present age. The sixth dispensation extends from the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, to the rapture, 1 Thess 4, 13, 18, 2 Thess 2, 1 to 12, and includes Matthew 27, 57, Mark 15, 42, Luke 23, 50, and John 19, 31, to Revelation 6, 1. Take a look at that, Luke 23, 50. And once in a while you just double check things. Huh. Nineteen thirty one of John. Sometimes maybe I didn't type it right. Then the Jews, because it was the day of preparation, said the bodies would remain on the would not remain on the cross. Sabbath, the Sabbath is highly a high day. As Pilate that the lazy wow. I don't see where this is applicable. Well, it gives a historical frame of reference, I suppose. Israel clearly demonstrated man's inability to obey God on the basis of the five ruling factors, including the external Mosaic law of the fifth dispensation. Thus, God began a sixth dispensation by instituting his grace as a new ruling factor. The sixth dispensation has five ruling factors which God uses to govern people. Here we go. Human conscience since the beginning, the restraint by the Holy Spirit, human government, promise, plus grace. It should be noted that the Mosaic Law is not a ruling factor in the present dispensation. God intended it to be in effect only until the ministry of Christ. Galatians 3.19, for example. Let's double check that. Why the law then? <clears throat> it was added because of transgressions having been ordained through the angels by the agency of a mediator until the seed would come to whom the promise had been made. There you go. That makes sense. No, neither all nor any part uh, of ceremonial, moral, or civil of the Mosaic law is a ruling factor in the present dispensation. Some people some contend that that's the case. As a ruling factor for the believer, the grace consists of two things, a confirmed favorable disposition toward God, the law of God in the heart, fulfilled in part in believers during this age via the indwelling Holy Spirit and the indwelling Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20. I don't need this. It's good 
and the just semicolon that the both dispensational theologians have named the sixth dispensation after the new ruling factor because that is the factor which makes the sixth dispensation distinct from the fifth. See how God is working to show that his sovereignty permits man to work alongside of his sovereignty provided they follow the rules. And there's gracious provision there enabling them to do that should they choose to do so, but they failed. The special revelation which God gave for the sixth dispensation is recorded in the latter part of the Gospels, the book of Acts, the epistles, Revelation 1 to 19. Unsaved Jews and Gentiles are to receive the gift of righteousness through faith in Christ. They're credited with Christ's righteousness. The organized church is to fulfill the Great Commission, to maintain a pure membership, to discipline unruly members, to prevent Paul's teaching from existing within it, and to contend earnestly for the true faith. <clears throat> Individual believers are to live sensible, godly lives, to be associated with a local church, to evangelize and make disciples, and to use spiritual gifts properly. Man's responsibility during the sixth dispensation is to obey God on the basis of of human conscience, the restraint by the Holy Spirit, the human government, promise, and that ruling factor, grace. This responsibility subjects man to the following test. Does man obey God on the basis of these five ruling factors? And you know the answer. Secondary rules governing human behavior. Acts 1.8, all believers shall be witnesses of Christ. Evangelism. <clears throat> Acts 1.8, <clears throat> all believers are indwelt with the Holy Spirit, spirit life. C. Acts 1.11. Christ will return for his church. D. Matthew 28.19-20. The church shall make disciples. Spiritual growth. E. Acts 15.29.29. Well, 15.29. Uh, I'll put dots here. The church shall abstain from idolatry. Worship God. Acts 15.29. The church shall keep from fornication, marriage, and purity. Acts 15, 29, also. The church shall keep from things strangled and from blood, sanctity of life. A lot of things, people say, well, why do that? Because the principle overrides uh, the utility of being convenient in this temporal life. Sometimes you go out of your way to emphasize the sovereignty and purity of God. Conclusion. What's the conclusion of this dispensation? Man fails the test of the sixth dispensation after all the helps that he gets and the past reminders of what didn't work beforehand. The majority of unsaved Jews and Gentiles do not accept the gift of righteousness. Organized Christendom does not fulfill the Great Commission Maintain a pure membership. Discipline unruly members. Prevent false teaching from existing within it. How many churches have you gone to? The gospel is false. And contend earnestly for the true faith. Individual believers do not always live sensible godly lives. Associate with a local church. Evangelize and make disciples. And use spiritual gifts properly. This failure during this present dispensation brings God's judgment and chastisement. God chastens and even brings premature physical death to some believers for disobedience. He puts some local churches out of existence. 